and you are welcome to my chemistry class. Before now, I have been able to establish that chemistry is the study of the composition, properties, and uses of matter. Now, what is matter? Matter is anything that has mass, not weight, and occupies space. Matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. Mass is different from weight in the sense that mass is the quantity of substance or quantity of matter a body or an object possesses, while weight is the earth pull on an object. So if you throw a body off, it comes down. There is force of gravity acting on that body or on that object. So when gravity acts on an object, it has weight. This is why weight is mass times gravity. I also explained that matter can be divided into pure and impure substances. Matter can be divided into pure and impure substances. Pure substances are elements and compounds, while the impure substances are referred to as mixtures. What is a mixture? Mixture contains two or more elements, or elements and substance, or elements and compound. Once you mix anything, Physically, you form a mixture. Mixture is different from compound in the sense that compound contains two or more elements combined chemically. Sodium is an element, chlorine is an element. When you combine them, you form sodium chloride. It's a compound. So the characteristic of compound is different from the character of each of the elements making up the compound. And you cannot separate compound by a known mix. Meanwhile, mixtures are physically combined. For example, air is a mixture. Air contains nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, argon, impurities, and dissolved gases. That is mixture. And all these components, they are visible in mixture. Take a look at seawater. Water is supposed to be colorless, odorless, and tasteless. But when you take in seawater, you notice that it is salty. In that case, it is mixed. You have water and so separation techniques are the various way the method we apply to separate things that are mixed physically so depending on the type of mixture we have evaporation filtration decantation sublimation crystallization simple distillation fractional distillation chromatography centrifugation separating funnel magnetization or magnetic separation precipitation and sieving these are 13 ways of separating mixture. In other words, 13 separation techniques. What are they and which mixtures are they used to separate? Let us begin the journey. By the way, take a bottle of cherry water. Evaporation is a separation technique. Now, look at something. In my video on change of states, I told you that matter can exist in different states. Solid, liquid, and gases, or gaseous states. And matter can change from one state to another. When matter changes from the liquid to solid, we say that that is freezing. And when it changes from solid back to liquid, we say the solid has melted. That is melting. When the solid changes to gas directly, without passing through the liquid state, we say the solid has sublimed. And when a gas changes to solid directly, without passing through the liquid state, we say that is deposition. In cold area, you look at your window, from nowhere you see snow, so gases, they've deposited on the window, that is deposition. Evaporation, on the other hand, is change of state of matter from liquid to gas. Now, if I say uh, change of state of matter, don't confuse matter. Matter is anything that has mass and occupies space, and the things we see around, they are matter. The stone, the board, air, water, gas, everything you see around, they are basically matter. So when I mention matter, imagine a uh, substance. So when you boil water, you see the gas is coming up, it's evaporating. So matter or the liquid is changing to gas. So that is evaporation. Now when is evaporation te uh, used as a separation technique? And what principle is it based on? Evaporation is based on Volatility difference. Difference in volatility between constituent mixtures. What is volatility? In layman language, 
Volatility is the ability of like a substance to escape. Look at petrol, it's volatile, it can escape. And water, when you hit water, it evaporates. So it is volatile, right? So that is the principle it works on. And what is separation used? Or what is evaporation as a separation technique used for? It is used to separate soluble solid from liquid or to separate solvent from solution. To separate soluble solid from liquid or to separate, uh, separate solvent from solution. If the solvent is not the type that decomposes on heating. In summary, when you have a liquid and solid, and the solid, especially salt, can dissolve in the liquid. If this solid or this salt that dissolves in the liquid will not decompose when you heat, then to separate that salt or that solid from liquid, you evaporate. Look at example, salt making from sea water. Sea water contains salt and water. Now, when you heat, you see water evaporates, right? It goes off in form of gas. If, as all the water evaporates, they evaporate to dryness, the deposit of salt will be left behind. So you separated the mixture of salt and water by evaporation. Now, if you are still interested in the water, you can condense the water. Condensation is the process whereby gas go back to liquid. For example, in your kettle, when you are boiling water, as it reaches 100 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling point of water, you see water vapor coming out. That is special state of matter. Put your hand on top, you see gas is entering your hand at first. But with time, you see it begins, it turns to droplet of water. Water begins to drop. So gas has now condensed. That is condensation. So examples of evaporation, salt mixing from sea water, solution of copper sulfate. It doesn't decompose, it's a salt, so you can separate it from water evaporation. So the volatile one goes, the other one remains. So evaporation works on the principle of uh, volatility difference or difference in volatility. It is used to separate soluble solid from liquid if the solid does not decompose on heating. Filtration is a common separation technique in the sense that it needs to filter. So why do you filter? If you have this and this, you don't need this, you need this. You simply filter, uh, remove what you want, want from what you want. You filter. That is filtration. Now, what principle does filtration work on? Filtration works on difference in particle size. If you have a mixture where the size of particles are different, you simply filter. And filtration is used to separate solids from liquid or gases using filter. Now, look at something. Purification of water or filters using AC. If you've seen an air conditioner, when you open an air conditioner or at the top, you see a filter. What is that? It filters uh, it prevents solid from passing and liquid or air from go uh, air can go in but solid particles don't go in with time when you open the filter you see a lot of particles that are not allowed to go in in fact let's say you have uh, uh, two particles with difference in size when you have your filter one goes even the rice beans you have some filter you put it on top even gary you filter you can filter so filtration will work but the Examples we are using here is purification of water. So you remove impurities using filter, then filter in AC. Decantation. And decantation works based on the principle of phase difference. Phase difference. What is it used for? It is used to separate insoluble solid from liquid. Now, look at it. In evaporation, we said soluble solid from liquid if the solid does not decompose when you heat. But look at this one, decantation. When you have a solid, it does not dissolve in water, and the solid mixed with water or with liquid, any liquid at all, you can use decantation to separate them. So example of a case where we use decantation is rice and water. So rice obviously doesn't dissolve in water, so you can use decantation to separate them. And sublimation. I told you that sublimation works on the principle or based on the fact that substances can change from solid to gas directly without passing through the liquid stage. So what is separation used to the sublimation used to separate? It is used to separate sublimable solids from non-sublimable solids. Why talking about sublimation? I did not make a give example. Now camphor. Take a look at camphor. In your clothes, put camphor inside your clothes. 
You need to increase the sales or for your personal business. After some time, open the boss. If you are lucky, you need small size. If you are not lucky, or maybe it has done its job, you will not need anything at all. So what has happened? And looking at your clothes, it will not be wet. So it vanished. <laughs> what has happened? From that solid state of the camphor like this, it goes to the short state. Without passing through the liquid state, the clothes doesn't get wet. That is sublimation. So it is used to separate sublimable liquid, uh, solid, solid that can sublime from non-sublimable solid, from solid that cannot undergo sublimation. When you mix ammonium chloride and sodium chloride, apart from camphor, ammonium chloride can sublime. So, to separate ammonium chloride and sodium chloride, you use sublimation. What happens during sublimation? Ammonium chloride will go to a, will leave from solid state to gaseous state to sublime and disappear, leaving behind sodium chloride. So, that is the principle. The next one we shall talk about is crystallization. And take note of something. Crystallization is a separation technique used when purity of the substance or product is very, very important. When purity is very, very important. Look at example in, in sea water. When you have salt, you heat the salt, right? Then uh, the water evaporates. There's some particle of salt evaporates. Fine, leave it behind salt. So that salt may not be in, in a pure form. Then you still have to purify or filter that salt to remove impurity. So the aim of crystallization is basically to bring out that crystal, the pure form of the substance. So crystallization works on difference in solubility. Difference in solubility. And it is used to separate solute from solution if the solute decomposes to impurity. Simple distillation, fractional distillation. Principle, they both work on difference in boiling point. When you have mixture with difference in boiling point, you use distillation. But if you have just two mixtures with far apart boiling point, you use simple distillation. If the boiling point between them is very close, you use fractional distillation. Now, simple distillation is used to separate mixture containing two miscible liquids with far apart boiling point. Two miscible liquids with far apart boiling point. An examples or application of simple distillation is in acetone and water. Acetone is has a boiling, uh, boiling point of acetone is 56 degrees Celsius, while water is 100 degrees Celsius. So there is a wide difference in boiling point. So therefore, we use simple distillation. In making of local gin or alcohol, we apply simple distillation because you see two mixtures with very far apart boiling point. You distill them. Then, fractional distillation is used to separate two or more miscible liquids for which boiling point is less than 25 Kelvin. Or, you can say they are used to separate mixtures with very close boiling point. So you can change it to mixture with very close boiling point. You can change it to, to separate mixture with far apart boiling point. Two mixture, then two or more mixtures. Look at example, in fractional distillation, you apply fractional, in petroleum fractions, you apply fractional distillation so that the various components of petrol will fall apart. The, their boiling point is very close, is very close. So during fractional distillation, as you heat, the one that boils first goes out, then the next one, you get to the next boiling point. So as they get to their boiling point, they separate out. So once again, fractional distillation is used to separate mixture with close boiling point. Examples in petroleum fractions to separate them, the methanol and ethanol, they are alkanons. They have very close boiling point. You employ fractional distillation to separate them. And the next one here is chromatography. Chromatography works based on the principle of difference in speed, or you can say difference in the rate of migration. What is it used for? It is used to separate Different components in liquid mixture. Different components in liquid mixture. So components move at different speed, making them to separate out. Remember, chromatography was based on difference in speed or difference in migration. So when you have different components in liquid mixture, as they move through the column, you have the stationary column and the mobile column. In the mobile part, they move at different rates. So at source, they separate out based on difference in rate of movement or speed or migration. 
of the component of the mixture. Examples to separate colors in a dye, pigments from natural color, and drugs from blood. When you are separating drugs from blood, you use chromatography because they have difference in the rate of migration. The next one is centrifugation. Centrifugation works based on the principle of mass, size, and density. Density is simply mass per unit volume. And what is it used for? Centrifugation is used to separate insoluble materials from a liquid where normal filtration doesn't work. If normal filtration doesn't work, you have insoluble materials from a liquid to use centrifugation. Example, in the lab for blood and urine tests. So centrifugation is used in the lab for blood and urine tests. And it's used to squeeze water from clothes in washing machine. And separating funnel. Well, separating funnel works based on the principle of difference in density. Density is mass per unit volume. For example, if you see water and blood, blood is thicker than water, or petrol and diesel, and, or engine oil. That is, you see that the engine oil is very thick, it's dense, denser than water. So, this guy works based on the principle of difference in density. What is it used to separate? To separate two immiscible liquids. When you have two liquids that cannot be that cannot miss, to use separating funnel, two immiscible liquids, two immiscible liquids. Why in distillation you have miscible liquids or miscible mixtures? What is example of mixtures separated using separating funnel? Oil and water. Oil and water cannot miss, so you can use separating funnel to separate them. Kerosene and water. You can use separating funnel. To separate them and the next one is magnetic separation it works based on the principle of magnetizability so when you have two materials one can be magnetic the other one cannot be magnetic so you simply use magnet to remove the one that can be magnetic from the one that cannot be magnetic that is the simple principle and what it is used for example in iron filings and sand mixture we have iron filings in sand iron filings can be magnetic so you simply magnet them and remove from sand Simple and straightforward. Precipitation works based on the principle of solubility difference. Difference in solubility. That is the principle of precipitation. Same as crystallization. They work based on difference in solubility. But in this case, precipitation is used to separate mixture based on the solubility of its component. An example is silver, a solution of silver nitrate and solution of sodium chloride. You use them, use precipitation to separate them. And CV, which is our final separation technique, is used when there is difference in particle size. You have different particles. Okay, look at example gallium production. You see that the particles are different in size. So you can actually sieve to remove the finer particles and leave the rougher particles. That is just the principle of sieving. And sieving is used to separate solid from solids of different size. When you have particles of different size, you sieve. Even uh, sand, when you pour sand, these are the particles are different in size. So you can use something to sieve or to filter. You can use that. You can then filtration can come in. So depending on what you want. Ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of the class. I hope you found this helpful. Feel free to let me know how you feel in the comment box. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more amazing videos and check out my videos across other subjects and topics. Thank you.